Hello and welcome to Every Rock Has a Story. For today's story, I'm going to tell you about a rock I collected on another National Science Foundation expedition right nearby in Vermont. That's not too far from Massachusetts where I live. The rock is this one, right over here on the side. It's kind of flat and shiny on the bottom, flat and shiny on the top, but in the side there, see those two? Let me show you what those are. I wonder if you can guess if you've watched my other videos. Those are my favorite mineral, garnet. Great big ones too, dark red color. And you can see they kind of have a hexagonal outline. They're like little hexagonal balls, those garnets are. And they have that wavy mica shining on the top and on the bottom. This is a metamorphic rock, which means that it was squeezed and heated up deep in the roots of ancient mountains. This is from ancient mountains that were as high as the Himalayas 380 million years ago. This is what we call a schist, a metamorphic schist. And because it has those great big garnets in it, we can call it a garnet schist. Now, if you've watched my video number 22, you know garnet is my favorite mineral. And you know that garnets are like a history book. They're like a tree ring history book of the earth. And these garnets are no different. We wanted to study how long these garnets grew and learn about those ancient mountains and all the processes happening deep inside 380 million years ago. In fact, we found that these garnets grew over four million years. These are four million year long history books of the great mountains, the Acadian mountains, 380 million years ago, right here in Massachusetts and Vermont. Now you might be asking, how do you know? How do you know that this was 380 million years old? How do you know it grew over a history book four million years long? You should ask those questions. Don't just listen to someone tell you what way things were. Ask them how they know. What's the data? Well, I'll tell you some of the answers of how we figure that out. But first, to answer those questions, if you're a geologist, you have to get the rocks. So, of course, to get those rocks, I'm going to put on my hand lens to get ready to go in the field. I'm going to get my, my geology gloves, my work gloves, keep my hands safe and protected as I go out into the field to get those rocks. And let's see, now I'm ready to hammer, got my geology hammer, and then before I ever do hammering, I always put on safety goggles to make sure I'm safe. Now I'm ready to sample. So let me show you where we went to sample this rock. We went to Vermont, a place called Townsend Dam, and we had to climb down a cliff, that steep cliff. In fact, if you look, there's one of my friends right there helping us to collect these rocks. At the bottom of that cliff, we found these beautiful garnet schists. And I'll go to the next one. I have to take off my glove. When we got back inside, we took that great big chunk of rock. See that? And we put it on, this is a little clamp on a saw, and we cut off bits of it. You can see that part up there has been cut off. And we cut out the garnets we were interested in. And then when we got back, of course, we had to put down our hammer, take off our work gloves, didn't need the hand lens anymore, because then it was time to go in the laboratory. In the laboratory is where we can analyze the chemistry of the garnet. We do geochemistry to figure out its age. So we have to put on a different outfit. We have to go in the lab and we have to put on lab coat. Here's my lab coat I'm putting on. There we go. I usually button it all the way up, but for now I'll just button that top button if I can find it. There we go. And then I put on my gloves. We wear gloves, different kind of gloves, for safety in the laboratory. Put those gloves on. These are blue gloves. They're made out of a special material called nitrile. And it helps protect our hands from certain things that I'll tell you about in the lab. 
oops, I'm rushing, so I'm not putting it on the right way. You should never rush when you're working in the lab. It's a good thing I'm just doing a demonstration. And my safety goggles. We wear different safety goggles in the lab. Now I'm ready to do lab work. And what happens in lab is first we take those garnets that we've cut out and we have to measure, sample out each ring of growth and then we have to dissolve it. And so to do that work, we have to go inside what we call our clean laboratory. There is a picture of our clean laboratory at Boston College. And all those cubbies in places there have super clean conditions and super safe conditions for working. There's two of my friends, Mike and Steph, working in one of those cubbies. And we have a lot of people come in there's some other friends. There's Kaylee doing some work that I'll tell you about in a second. And there's Steph leading some students on a tour of our lab as well. You'll see everybody's wearing goggles and blue gloves and even some ha hair nets to keep the dirtiness out from our hair from getting in. What we do in the clean lab is we, we dissolve the rocks. We have to dissolve them in strong acid, which breaks them all down. And then inside every garnet, there are certain elements which are radioactive. Radioactive. They're like little ticking clocks and they very slowly decay. And when those radioactive elements break down and fall apart, they turn into a different element that we call the daughter. So that parent radioactive element breaks down and turns into a daughter. And we know how fast parents turn into daughters. So all we have to do is measure how much parent is in the garnet, how much daughter has been created, and then we can figure out how old it is. Now there's a little bit more to it than that, but that's the idea. So after we've dissolved the garnets, then we have to do something called column chromatography. And we use something like this. We have columns of different lengths and we pour the dissolved garnet in the top. It's like a yellow green potion and it drips down through that column and out the bottom we collect just the daughter element that's been accumulating in that rock. And then we go to another laboratory, our mass spectrometer. Here, that's the mass spectrometer at Boston College and we open that front door and that's what it looks like inside. And each one of those little spots has a different sample that we've extracted out of that garnet that we'll use to measure and tell us the age. What? You didn't think geologists did stuff like this? You thought that geologists only did hammering in the field? If you're a geologist, if you're a geoscientist like I am, you get to go hiking and collect rocks in the mountains and you get to come into the laboratory and wear the fancy gloves and the goggles and the white jackets where we do geochemistry to figure out the age of our tree ring records 380 million years ago. Geoscientists do geochemistry. Geoscientists do geophysics. Geoscientists do geobiology. And we look at the sky, the atmosphere, the oceans, the surface of the land, and the deep earth. And we use geochemistry, geophysics, and geobiology to see how all those things fit together. So if you like geology, and if you like seeing how all those things fit together, chemistry, physics, biology, the oceans, the land, the atmosphere, and the deep earth, then maybe the geosciences is where you want to look for ideas to explore. This is the story of my Vermont garnet chest, 300 million years old, and how we figured out how old it was doing geochemistry. Bye-bye.